Hello, and welcome to lesson 1.9. Uh, we are ready to get started with this question. Uh, it says, what do these words have in common? So take a look at those words, difference, fewer, how many more, and how many less? What do, the youth, what do you think they have in common? Well, what most of these words, they have lots of things in common, but today we're gonna to be talking about subtraction, right? And all of these words really indicate subtraction in a word problem. Difference is always subtraction, right? What's the difference between two things? The difference between something larger and smaller, all right? Fewer, how many more, how many less? These are words that we see that indicate subtraction in most um, situations. Here's a math message. Miss Ma Miss Shave had ninety dollars. She spent thirty-seven dollars on books. How much money does she have left? Be be ready to share how you solve this problem. So take a moment and do that work, please. What you should have noticed is that uh, this problem is a subtraction problem, right? Ninety minus 37. And there's a couple of different ways that we could do that problem, but we're going to really focus on um, the, the traditional method. Now, um, before we, we do that, though, you did learn some other different types of methods. One good method uh, that uh, you can kind of do in your head is if you take this, this 90, right, and you subtract just 30, you know that you are down to 60. And then you need to subtract the 7, and then you'll have 53. Okay, so that's one, that's kind of that, that um, partial differences method that you might have learned in the past. Really, this, uh, in this lesson, we're going to be focused on a, a standard um, me method for doing these problems. So when I look in this column, this one's place, this says 0 minus 7. Well, I can't do 0 minus 7. Right? If I have zero of something, I can't take away seven. So I have to borrow a group of 10. Right? And so when I do that, I'm going to get rid of that group. Right? I'm taking that group of 10 and I'm moving it over here. That group of 10 is worth 10 ones. So now I can do this. 10 minus seven is three and eight minus three is five. Right? 53 is our answer. 53 what? $53. So our objective today is to be able to subtract multi-digit numbers correctly. We're going to do some practice problems here. Remember, just like we did with our last lesson about addition, uh, we're going with this traditional algorithm, which is just how your grandparents and parents and all the old people that you know uh, learned how to subtract. We're going to estimate first so that we can uh, have an idea of where our answer should be so that when we complete the problem, we can make sure that our answer fits the problem that's being asked. So as I estimate this, 62 uh, minus 38, well, 62, that's closer to 60. That would round to 60. 35, five and above gives it a shove, right? So that would round to 40. And 60 minus 40 equals 20. So that's my estimate. Now when I subtract these, I want to start with the ones place. The ones place says two minus five. Well, if I have two dollars, I can't give away five dollars. I, can, I can't pay someone five dollars if I only have two. So I have to borrow from the next number. Now I have one less here, one less group of 10. And those 10 come over here and join this two, which now makes 12 here. Right, a group of 10 came over and joined the two that were already there. 12 minus five equals seven, and five minus three equals two, right, 27. And my estimate was 20, so those are about, you know, pretty close. Here's one for you to try. You go ahead and do that. Find your estimate first, and then solve the problem. Let's see what we should have had. 76, I would round that to 80. And 32, I would round that to 30. And there's different ways to estimate. There's lots of different ways to estimate. Um, this, in this situation, I'm just rounding to the highest place value. So I'm expecting an answer around 50. So I have 76 minus 32. So here I have 6 minus 2. I don't need to borrow in that one. right? Sometimes when students work on subtraction, they just start borrowing everything. 
And so you really want to think about, do I need to borrow? Six minus two. If I have six dollars, I can take away two and have four left over. Seven minus three is also four. Forty-four. Our estimate was 50, so we're in the same ballpark. All right, let's go into the three digits here. An estimate, 600, well, that I can just keep the same for my estimate, minus eight, so that kind of shoves that up, five and above, shoves the four to a five. My estimate is 100 here. Now, sometimes uh, zeros can be a little tricky. So you wanna be real careful with your zeros here. Zero minus one, right? I can't do that. If I have zero dollars, I can't give away one. If I want to borrow, I'm gonna borrow from this number, but there's nothing here. So instead I have to borrow from the six. And here's how that works. I'm gonna take one away from the six and give it here. Now I have 10 here, okay? But I still have a problem because I can't do zero minus one still. But now there's something for me to borrow from in the tens place. So I'm going to borrow from the 10, make it nine, and now I have 10 here. Now I can go through and do my uh, subtraction facts to get my answer of 119. So just be a little careful when you see zeros. Um, the borrowing is similar, but just a little trickier sometimes. Here's a three digit problem for you to try. Take a moment, make your estimate, and then find your answer. What should we have had? This is closer to 800. This is closer to 700. So my estimate is 100. And let's take a look at our problem. 817 minus 724. I'm going to look at each place value. I'm going to start at the ones place. Seven minus four. I don't need to borrow for that problem. So seven minus four equals three. If you don't have a three in the ones place, you might have tried to borrow, but notice that you don't have to because the bigger number is on the top. When the big number is on the bottom, you have to borrow. In the tens place, one minus two. I can't do one minus two. The bigger number is on the bottom. So I'm going to borrow from the eight. That's a group of a hundred, right? 10 tens. And so I'm gonna take 10 and I'm gonna give it right over here. Now there's already one there, so now there's 11, because 10 came from over here and joined the one that was already there. Hey, okay, when I subtract that, I get nine, and then seven minus seven equals zero. So our answer is uh, close to our estimate. All right, last problem here for you to try. Go ahead and uh, give this one a go. All right, let's see what you did here. Estimating, well, there's a couple ways you could do this. Uh, this one is going to be closest to 300, right? So I know I'm gonna be subtracting 300. And some people might have said 6,400 since this, was in the, this one was in the hundreds. Or if you said 6,000, that's fine too. Um, either way would work. I'm gonna put 6,400 just because I was dealing with hundreds here. So my estimate is about 6,100. And we'll check your work. Let's see if you got this one right. Be careful when lining up your numbers. This two is in the hundreds place. So it has to go right here. If you put a, a two under the six, then that's going to throw everything off because it's not in the correct place value spot. So should be written like this. And then when we begin this problem, one minus three, we have to borrow. Then we'll have 11 here. 11 minus three equals eight. In this place value, we have one minus seven. Well, that's not going to work either. Bigger numbers on the bottom. So we're going to have to borrow up from the 100 spot. That sends 10 over. So now we have 11 in the 10 spot. 11 minus seven is four. Three minus two is one and six minus zero is six. Again, that was pretty close to our estimate. So we've done a lot of practice uh, of using this traditional algorithm. Here's the math journal page for you. Make sure that you make your estimate first, 
don't do the problem and then make the estimate. That's not really the point of making an estimate. And that's going to be valuable as we move into word problems later. And then you are going to um, do the actual problem and compare your estimate and your real answer and see if they make sense. So you have these problems to do and then one word problem at the end. Okay, so our uh, goal today, let's see if we can put that back up. There it is. Our goal today was to be able to subtract multi-digit numbers correctly. Please reach out if you need any help with anything and good luck.